Hey guys, um, the second and third video um, in the video J series is going to be about the second derivative test for extrema. Uh, we've been using the second derivative test to learn about concavity and points of inflection, but now it's time to kind of branch out a little bit and see how we might use this test to locate relative extrema. Uh, before we do that, let's review a little bit the first derivative test for extrema. So FDT for a first derivative test for mins and maxes. We just lump that together and we're going to call it extrema. Okay, let's take a graphical approach first of all. Uh, consider um, a parabola, just picking on the parabola, that opens upward. Uh, this is our regular graph F here. Okay, and let's call the minimum here, this vertex C, the x-coordinate of that minimum is going to be C. So we can clearly see that this function has a relative minimum at x equals C. So F has a relative min at x equals C. So that's our critical point, or critical number, x equals C, whatever that is. And we can see that the reason we have a relative min is because, I'm just going to abbreviate here, because f prime, our slopes, change from negative to positive. So we know the slope of the graph here is going to be negative. We know the slope of the graph here is positive. Uh, if, if, we, if we did happen to have an equation for f, then when we found the derivative, we would locate our critical numbers. We'd put those on our f prime number line, indicating whether they're zeros or does not exist critical numbers. Okay, and we can clearly see that all these slopes are negative. Okay, so our f prime number line uh, would look something like this. So we knew that we had a relative minimum if on our f prime number line graph, our slopes change from negative to positive at a critical number. Okay, well, let's look over here at another function that has a maximum. Oh, brother. <laughs> uh, let's show a downward opening parabola because we know that has a maximum. Uh, we'll just say that the maximum occurs at x equals c. That's our critical number. And our justification, if we were looking at an f prime number line for this f graph, is because f prime, the slopes, are going to change from positive to negative. And if we did have an equation for f, we would probably find its derivative, locate the critical numbers, create an f prime number line, We have a zero slope here. These slopes would be positive. When we did our test values, the slopes to the right of C would be negative on the graph when we did test values. Okay, so the first derivative test for extrema has us find the first derivative uh, and notice when the slopes change from positive to negative at a critical number or negative to positive at a critical number. Okay, So that's what that looks like. All right, so let's move on and look at the second derivative test and how does that look different? All right, let's look at the second derivative test for extrema. All right, we're going to consider the same function that has a minimum on it that we did up there for the first derivative test. And so just our function here, our local relative, if you will, minimum occurs at x equals c. So we know this function has a relative min at x equals c. All right, now our justification here 
is going to include something from the second derivative test. Just kind of study this for a second. Okay, why can we say that we have a relative min at x equals c using an alternate um, justification? Well, one thing we have to establish is that, first of all, there is a critical number at x equals c. So we can see that the first derivative at c is equal to zero. So the first thing we're going to have to do is locate from the first derivative the critical numbers. Okay, then it's all about the concavity. And we know that f double prime, the concavity at c, well, if I were to find the second derivative, evaluate it at c, I'm going to get a positive number because I see that the graph is concave up for that minimum to occur. That's our second derivative test for extrema. Okay, we look at the concavity at that c value uh, at which I have a critical number here, um, where I have a possible extrema. Okay, so let's look at um, a maximum situation. Consider the same graph we looked at earlier. I, you know, just for the sake of um, you know content here, it's just as easy to work with a parabola. So um, I just always kind of pick on the parabola. It kind of helps remind me about certain things. Instead of having to think too deep, I can just kind of look at a problem and go, now if that's occurring, I know, you know, I'm thinking about this right. So f has a relative max at x equals c. Because, we don't want to talk about the slopes changing from positive to negative. I already have that up here. Because first of all, we've established that the slope of the graph at C is zero. I mean, it could have been I had a sharp turn here, and it could have been F prime of C does not exist. But for my parabola, I have a zero slope. I could have picked on the upside down absolute value graph, and that could have been F prime of C does not exist. Then it would have been a little bit hard to talk about concavity. So we have a maximum because one, the slope is zero, and the second derivative at C, when I find the second derivative and plug in C, it's going to be a negative number because this graph is concave down. This graph was concave up, this graph is concave down. So that's the second derivative test for extrema. I have a couple of examples so that we can see how to uh, put this in, in play. All right, let's find the relative extrema, use the second derivative test if possible. If it's not possible, we're going to go back to the first derivative test, which we can always use. More about that later. Let's just get through what, um, what this, uh, this second derivative test does for us. Consider the fifth degree polynomial function as given by negative 3x to the fifth plus 5x cubed. Something you might want to do is produce a graph of this fifth degree function uh, just to get an idea of how many mins and maxes we should be looking for. Uh, if I think about this graph right here, I'm uh, you know, trying to think about what the graph looks like. Um, it probably is going to take on some kind of shape like, like this right here. Now, I, I might not have any mins or maxes. I might have a lot of flat spots in here, or not a lot, but some. Uh, but we'll look at specifically what the graph looks like um, here when we're finished. All right, to use the second derivative test, the first thing we want to do is find the critical numbers. We have to do that at least. We have to identify if we have any critical numbers and then determine the concavity at those at those critical numbers. So let's find the first derivative. Well, the derivative exists everywhere, so what we're looking for is where the derivative might possibly, um, let's see, equal zero. So I'm going to factor out a negative 15x squared, leaving x squared minus 1. Right, and of course I'm always going to go back myself and check it by di um, distributing. All right, so either x is 0 or x is positive or negative 1. So it looks like I have three critical numbers. Again, the notation would look something like this. All 
Okay, so at this point with this second derivative test, what we have to do is we have to plug each of these C values that I found, these three, into the second derivative to find out the sign, to see if we have a positive or negative second derivative. So let me go ahead and find the next derivative. Negative 60x cubed plus 30x. Uh, so we have the second derivative. Now at this point, let's just go ahead and start finding the, the values um, at each of those critical numbers, the values of the second derivative in, at each of those. Okay. Well, if we start with 0, f double prime of 0, let's figure out the concavity on this graph, this fifth degree graph at x equals 0, the concavity. If I evaluate the second derivative at 0, notice that I get a 0. That's not positive or negative. Okay, well, that doesn't reveal anything to me. I'm kind of suspicious that it might not be a min or a max. Okay, so the second derivative test for extrema fails for this problem right here. Let's just go ahead and continue the problem. Okay, let's see if at 1 or negative 1 we can identify any relative extrema. So evaluating the second derivative at negative 1, all I care about is the sign. Well, this is a negative output times negative is positive. 60 minus 30, this output's going to be positive. So what we can say at this point here, okay, is that the function f, I think I'm going to come up here. f has a relative, let's think about it, relative what at x equals negative 1? And then I'm going to justify. Well, I know that the slope at negative 1 was 0, otherwise I wouldn't be testing it. And come down here, f double prime at that negative 1 is positive. So this information right here reveals to us that the concavity is upward. And if the concavity is upward, think about the parabola that opened up. The parabola that opened up had a minimum. So we have a relative min. I know it's kind of counterintuitive because you're looking at that word min and you're looking at the greater than and... You know, it can all get confusing, but just kind of pause and think about what this is saying to you. I have a zero slope, a flat place, and the graph is concave up from that flat, flat, flat place. Minimum, so we have a relative min. Okay, let's go back into the problem and let's do the second derivative test on positive one. Uh, it looks like that's going to be a negative value. So the second derivative, um, oh goodness, will be negative at c equals 1. So f has a relative, I'm going to leave that blank for a minute, at x equals 1. because f prime of 1 is 0. We've already identified the critical number there. Now let's investigate further. And we do know that f double prime at 1 is negative. Well, what does this tell us? It tells us the graph at the c value of 1 is concave down. If it's concave down, think about a downward opening parabola. And that's going to have a maximum. we still have to figure out what's happening at zero. Okay, so in that case, we're going to have to go back to the first derivative test. So at this point, we have the first derivative. We have it factored. You could create a number line. So if you think about the first derivative test, okay, using these critical numbers, okay, kind of build that right now. Now I'm going to come down on this kind of, kind of off here a little bit, but Think about if you had an f prime number line. Things aren't disappearing, but I sure am drawing worse. <laughs> here's negative 1, here's 0, and here's 1. These are all our 0 slopes. 
So what you're going to have to do at zero is on either side, you're going to have to do test values. Okay. But I guess we could use this information we've already found and kind of fill this in without plugging in maybe negative one half and positive one half uh, into the uh, first derivative. I guess we could somewhat do that. Okay. All right. So let me think about this number line for just a second. We knew that we had, let's come back up here at negative one, we have a minimum. So at negative one, if we have a minimum, we know the slopes, remember this being together, are going to go from negative to positive on either side of these, this zero. This zero belongs here. I don't know what happened here. Yeah, at positive one, we have a max. So here's one. If we have a maximum, then we know the slopes are going to change from positive to negative. So we can fill in on either side. And that way, we can avoid doing test values here. So we see that we do not have a relative extrema at c equals or x equals zero because we don't have a sign change on our slope values. So you could kind of use this information to help you build this. Um, I would go ahead and try and uh, type this equation in the calculator and produce a graph just to see that it verifies. But uh, according to what I'm seeing here, if I were to try and sketch a graph of the regular function, okay, if I think about creating a coordinate plane, putting the critical numbers on there as well. I know the function's falling into negative one. I don't know exactly where, okay, um, I'm gonna have a zero slope. I could find it by evaluating negative one into the function, but just kind of go with me here for a second. My graph is decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. I have a flat spot here. Graph starts to increase, and then at x equals zero, I have a zero slope, so it must be a flat spot. It continues upward until I have a maximum and starts to fall back down. So the fifth degree function must look something like this, or some basic shape like that, okay? All right, let's look at the next example.